listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair on RLM Radio. The girl of your dreams has got to be in some bar. Sorry, boys and girls, but this is X-rated. So if you're under 18... Get out, get down, eh? Get the point. Good. And now... Fendum. Y'all ready for this? We do it all night long. And now, your host, Grammy. Mokes. <laughs> it's a wacka 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 doodle Wednesday. It's the first wacka doodle Wednesday of the new Gregorian year. If you want to go by that calendar, which I am right now doing that. But, you know, who knows? In five minutes, I might decide that I want to go with Chinese calendar because it's a wacka doodle Wednesday don't you know and I change my mind more often than most people change their underwear (laughs) actually a lot more often than that oh well let's see yeah y'all listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair here on this wackadoodle Wednesday over here on reallibertymedia.com channel 3 also on the rlmradio.xyz side and the rlm spreaker channel and later to be on the rlm youtube channel and oh let's see where else will I be lots of other rlm num 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 places and uh, I've been checking out twitter I know, I'm such a twit. (laughs) And it's just not grabbing me today. There's just not a whole heck of a lot on Twitter that's just making me want to jump right out there and go, Oh, look, it's Twitter. Let's read what they got to say. You know, too many twits on there. Twits, tweets, whatever the hell. Opera is not responding. Way to be, Opera. Way to be. It's almost like Oprah. Only not. So, um... Dirty Mary and Crazy Grammy. Oh, well, no, hon. I took a shower this morning, although it's been a kind of a wackadoodle day. And, um, yeah, I think I'm going to have to have a soak just to ease. Go, um, because, oy, all oh, the tic-tac-toe they've been playing in the sky. The, the sky was so pretty earlier. And then this afternoon, they had to get out their damn planes. And start playing. And so, that's not cool. That's not cool. Hi there, TD, over here on the Freedoms Network. I see TD Sanders is over here. And uh, Grimmy was over here as well as Java Doctor and Katie Troxel and Cowboy Tech. Hey there, hi there. And thank you, Grimmy, for sharing me over there on that FM site. I did share a little bit of, you know, well, you might call it wisdom or you might call it, well, duh. But um, I did share a little tweet that I made earlier. I was feeling somewhat um, philosophical, you might say, which I have no idea who Phyllis is, and I don't know what kind of sophical I was touching, but I was feeling something. Okay, um, hey, I see Flasher was liking things over here as well. Okay, I'm going to clear those. Over here on Minds, which, by the way, since I closed Twitter, thank you, Grimmy, for tweeting me out over there on Twitter, or Barman, or whomever. I see Barman has gone to parts unknown. Um, also, I got two new stalkers over on Twitter. Woo-woo! Overachiever, I'm now over the 370 mark. <laughs> I'm an overachiever. Oh, here's a reposter over here on Mines. Awesome. Hi there, reposter. My daughter goes to kindergarten, and there's a boy who is blind. Ah, okay. And then it just switched. That's the thing about Mines. It keeps switching on me. I don't even get the first sentence read. Well, that time I did, but... And then it's like, what the hell? Where'd it go? Okay. <clears throat> I know, rascal, you're trying to help me, but you're not much help, sweetheart. Uh, over here on Fakey Book, I saw... Who was it I saw over here? I saw Tanya over here. Hey, Tanya. And I also saw... Um, oh, hey, there's Alice and Hutch as well. Hey, guys, how are you doing? Um, really pretty quiet over there on Fakie Book. Other than, I did get some wonderful news. My niece got out of the hospital today. Booyah, booyah. She's been having some pretty serious health issues. And it's like, damn it, damn it. 
stop this, you guys. We are supposed to be healthy. We are, our family is supposed to take over the world. Just ask mom. She'll tell you. Stop this nonsense. How are we supposed to have people coming along and uh, carrying on when we decide that we just can't do it anymore? Grimmy, you just beat me to the... <laughs> to that uh, link. I was going to go there, hon. But, you know, seeing as how you went ahead and posted it, I'm going to put that up here. Did you know that's not the only one to be concerned about, Grim? There's there's things afoot or an ass or a whatever. There's things going on. There is um, in the world. But before I get to that, I'm going to say hey to everybody over here in the RLM because, yeah, they came over here just to have a nice quiet evening and I invaded the quiet <laughs> because I can. Yes, hooray for my niece. Bless her heart. And I did send her some oils and my sister as well because she's also needing some assistance. So I blended up some oils for both of them. And they smell wonderful. So they will, it will be a wonderful perfume that's good for them. Oh, well, over here in the RLM, right up top, I see Barman is here. But Barman is not playing weather. Because Barman's having socket, socket issues. Sock it to me, sock it to me, sock it to me. I do see Grimner is over here, though, who is the RLM god. And, well, hey, god. Just bop barman upside the head. Maybe that would work. Foot and ass. Um, I would give someone a foot and ass disease. There were a few people today I would like to have given them that. But we will we will persevere without doing such things. And I really didn't want to have brown toenail polish anyway. I see the lovely Kate is here. Hi, Kate. How's things down in Florida? I've seen some pictures that it's not exactly balmy down there. Like it's somewhat damp and a little chilly in some parts. I also see the lovely Asmo. Hey, I know. I called you love me, didn't I, Asmo? Asmodeus Asmo. He is here. As well as the lovely Beth Z. Hey, Beth. How you doing? Got a double dip and a Chloe going on in the chat, too. Woo woo. Chloe. Chloe. Free enslaved. Hi, free enslaved. How are you doing, hon? Hope you're doing absolutely splendiferous. And I'm here, kind of, sort of, maybe. I had a discussion with a gal just before I left work, actually. And we decided that our silver hair is mature blonde. That's our story, and we're sticking with it. I see I.B. Don C. is here. Hey, Don, how's things in your world? You're still down in the great state of Texas. Real more cowbell. Honestly, not pumping gas is the only reason someone would go to Oregon. Really? I do have a cousin that lives in Oregon. I have no idea why. She's kind of weird, though, so maybe that's why. But Cowboy Tech is up there, isn't he? Isn't he in Oregon? Hmm. I don't think I'd want to go to... Nah. Oregon's not exactly where I want to go. Penguin, penguin, penguin! Now, I don't know what noise penguins make, or I would do a penguin noise. <laughs> but since I don't, I won't. Java, 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 Java Doctor 2 is in the house, as well as JJ's. Hey, JJ's, how you doing, hon? You Scottish feller, you. I also see Juana Taco is here, as well as Meister Brower Party. And looky there, P. Bunyan. Hey, P. Bunyan Timber. I was checking out some uh, wind generators that look like trees. Well, they don't really look like trees, but they're designed to kind of sort of, and they generate more electricity than the big wind turbines or even the, the personal home ones. And um, one of those tree wind generators w is supposed to generate enough electricity with a four to five mile an hour breeze, generate enough electricity for a um, household of four. So, it would work for me. Yay. Oh, Hal's in Oregon, too? Oh. Oh, they're gentle creatures. That's what. That's true. They are fragile. They are imports. They are fragile. Okay, where was I at? Rain! The lovely rain is in the house. Rain, rain, rain. I don't want any rain. I don't want any snow. Because it's a little bit cold out here. 
I also see RLM Flukey, the Vanna White of the RLM channel. And RLM Fluke is also not giving weather updates. What the hey? What the hey? What you guys do? Go on strike? Shame on you. And looky there, Rob Works is here. Rob, did you fire up the bubbler and I missed it? That's not hard for me to do today. I gotta warn you guys, I have been doing training all day. So, I have a training brain. In other words, it's going, uh, so yeah, bear with me. Trust no one is in the chat. Hey, you trusty feller, I really do prefer dark rooms. But if you want to be untrusting or trust no one or whatever, you go right ahead. Dakota is in the house, as well as Dima and Frumpy and Kozu. And looky there, mm, Bot and Moy and Nensan Dubois and Poxified and Pompo Ponsas and Real More Cowbell and the Cuddly One, Teddy. And to round out the crew, the one, the only, the Phantom that did my intro. Thank you once again, Phantom. And I don't know why I'm doing the hand signals, but I am. And you don't have to see it, so it's okay. So, let's see. Where do I want to go? Um, I think... What? Oh. Um, yeah, I, I, found, I have some of the, the responses to that as well grim let's go to grimmy's little thing from katu.com 17 reasons why you still can't pump your own gas in most of oregon 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 whatever that see i need to be retrained i need to it's not often that californies get to poke fun at another state yeah, then people in Florida get a por poke fun at Oregon, too. Apparently, a new law took effect January 1st, allowing some gas stations in the Beaver State's 15 counties with populations over 40,000 to offer self-serve gasoline. Dun, dun, dun! Three counties on the Oregon coast can now offer self-serve fueling from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. under the same bill. Dun, dun, dun. So apparently, prior to that, you had to wait for someone else to pump your gas for you because I just don't know how to work the fuel pump. I really shouldn't say a whole hell of a lot because it was just a couple weeks ago, the place where I go and fuel up all the time, which is just like right around the corner from where I work, Someone had forgotten and left the little pump thing in their, you know, in their gas can or in the, yeah, down in, the, yeah, that place. <laughs> left it in their car. I'm, I'm brain farting. I tell you, I, I've been trained. I've been trained. Be afraid. Um, but they drove off <laughs> with that still in the tank. And it's like, dun, dun, dun morons so maybe that's what they're worried about in any case a few stations have moved to take advantage of the law in general oregon remains one just one of two states new jersey is the other where you can't pump your own gas really and why is this that people can't pump their own gas are they are they just that moronic or is it witches can't trust you to pump the gas you might blow yourself up and us with you. Well, what are you worried about? You guys are already spraying us like bugs. Hmm. In general, Oregon... Okay, I already said that. So, not in Portland. The quickie backdrop for the comedy ser series Portlandia. Really? Not in Eugene, home of the University of Oregon Ducks. Duck, 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 duck. Wow. Talk about a mascot. Okay, and not in Salem, the state's capital. Apparently, the issue ignited quite a controversy on the KVAL News Facebook page over the New Year holiday, which, yes, it did. And I have the link to some of those comments, and they are priceless. Um, the same question posed by our sister station, KTVL, in Medford, exploded into a viral sensation. 
Some Oregonians didn't like the idea of self-serve gasoline ever going statewide. No disabled seniors, people with young children in the car, they need help. Not to mention getting out of your car with transients around and not feeling too safe. This is a very bad idea. Grr. Really? Wow. Wow. You you like living in that fear zone, don't you, Kathy? Hmm. It's a very bad idea, said David Kirk West. You know, and and it was implemented without problem in 48 to, of 50 states, representing 95% of the nation's population. But a very bad idea. From there on out, the responses won the internet, inspiring headlines out of outlets like um, Jalopnik, Join America in Laughing at Oregonians Freaking Out About Pumping Their Own Gas, or the Huffington Post. Ooh, I saw it on um, 50 Shades of, or yeah, Unofficial 50 Nerds of Grey. There you go, on the Facebook page. That's, that's where I first saw it this morning, and I went, what? Are you kidding me? Really? <laughs> There's actually a state where you don't have to pump your own gas? Because, you know, y'all are bitching because somebody... You mean, I have to pump my own gas? Hey, you know, I would love to go somewhere when it's like 90 below zero and the wind's blowing 90 to nothing and I was a dumbass and didn't fuel up the day before when it was still, you know, above freezing Fahrenheit. And so, yeah, I would have preferred to have someone else pumping that gas instead of me standing out there going <laughs> but no we can't have that here but you guys yeah you're special apparently Russell Gooch is moving to Oregon because I can't stop spilling fuel on myself <laughs> frequently soaking myself head to toe I have to lie and tell people it's really expensive cologne. I'm tired of the lies. Oh, poor Russell. I'm so sorry for you. Yes, and it's not often that Californians get to poke fun at another state. David Stone chimed in and said, We have lunatics running this state and things are a mess here. But at least from hippies to rednecks, we can pump our own gas. Today, today we look north. And we snicker. <laughs> so, why can't Oregonians pa pump their own gas? I, I'm sure they could pass their own gas. I'd hope to God they could. If they can't, they probably look really weird. Mm. Um, apparently, we are really incapable of driving beyond our own borders. Doomed to run out of fuel and wither away in the wilds of Washington, California, Idaho, or Nevada. <sighs> because we can't pump our own gas. We don't know how. Oh, these poor babies. Apparently, it's either a fire hazard, which I did see a picture on Twitter earlier today that was a picture linked to some of those comments of, you know, Portland went up in flames because a first-timer tried to pump their own gas. <laughs> of course, you know, they have lack of institutional control because, well, you know, what is that called? It's not incontinence when you, when you can't control your pump. <laughs> What's that called? Lawyers, guns, and money. Oh, there you go. That's probably why. Yeah, higher liability insurance rates. Mm-hmm. Rain and snow and highwaymen. Yes, when it's raining and snowing and you have to get out, you will develop a cold and then you will be susceptible to highwaymen or something like that. Of course, then you have your seniors and your disabled that, really? If they are so senior and so disabled that they can't figure out how to work a fuel pump, do they really need to be the nut holding the wheel? Just asking. Because I'm curious. What about a senior discount? I would like a senior discount. I'm seniorer than Grimner. <laughs> or airborne toxins. 
or economic justice. Ah, somebody better call AAA. I ran out of gas. I ran out of gas. Whatever shall I do? I'm doomed. Doomed, I tell you. You know, sweetie, come out here to the wilds in northwest Kansas where we don't have, you know, you can't see the edge of the world from here because that's a great big ice rink that's in Colorado. But um, it's close. It's close. Hmm. Oh, well, let's see. I think I'm going to go to that, what I put in my pocket, just so I can read to you some of these wonderful comments that people were making. So, from KTVL CBS 10 News in Medford. Pumping your own gas. Starting January 1st, Oregonians can begin pumping their own gas in rural communities. They can! Honest and for true! To which Kathy Dahl says, No! <laughs> Disabled and seniors and people with young children in the car, they need help! Not to mention getting out of your car with transients around! Ooh. <laughs> okay, apparently it's a very bad idea. But Tina Good said, it's not a good idea because there's lots of reasons to have an attendant helping. One is, they need a job. Many people are not capable of knowing how to pump gas and the hazards of not doing it correctly. Besides, I don't want to go to work smelling of gas when I get it on my hands or clothes. It's a very bad idea. <laughs> To which um, Sharek had to respond, <laughs> you're joking, right? You're not capable of knowing how to pump gas? Are you insane? Did they not, uh, pa did you not pass a driver's test? Apparently that's not part of the test in Oregon. You put the gas in your car, not shower in it, princess. So, how do you smell like gas? You're truly one of the most ignorant people I've ever witnessed. No lie. No joke. Yep. Let people get stranded in rural areas because princess isn't capable. <laughs> and then, you know, there's a lovely response from Shannon Tate, who uh, said, you Oregonians are funny. Oh my God, I can't pump my own gas. I might smell it. Oh my God, I can't pump my own gas. There are transients around. Oh my God, I can't pump my own gas. People will lose jobs. Freaking rednecks. Yeah, they're hilarious, Shannon. Mm. Of course, Carl, you know. Wheelchair, do you realize self-serve has already existed in other areas and that Oregon isn't the only state where disabled people live? Or are you really that dumb? Because if you are that dumb, then maybe the government mandate mandated full-service pumps really are a good idea in your area. Yeah. Mm, yeah, Oregon isn't the only place that has people that are somewhat disabled in one way or t'other and still being the nut holding the wheel. Of course, then there's Kyle Allen who had to drop this little gem on us all. One time, my dad came to Oregon and pumped his own gas. The street immediately lit on fire and caused massive recession countrywide because he took away 20 billion jobs by pumping his own gas. Of course, I was in the back seat when my brother was nabbed through the locked door by a transient creeper who raised him to be his human ottoman. My dad then tried whipping or wiping his windshield, but the stuff that he used turned out to be sulfuric acid. The car exploded with me in it and I died. My dad lost three parenting bonus points because he was two feet away fueling his car when he could have had someone else do this very simple task for him. Now see, the tragedy of that whole thing is dad lost three parenting points. Son of a, you know how hard those things are to earn? And he lost three of them there. Shit. Sandy Franklin says, I don't even know how to pump gas, and I'm 62 and a native Oregonian. I say, no thanks. I don't want to smell like gasoline. Okay, then don't bathe in it. 
It's really that simple. Don't wash your hands in it. Apparently, Leslie Hollywood says that she's in Colorado where we are forced to pump our own gas because I'm worried about my children being left in the car while I stand outside of it in my skirt. I just pay the transients to pump it for me. This way, we're all safe and the transients are distracted from bothering those who are pumping their own gas. See, Leslie, Leslie figured out how to do it. Mm-hmm. Apparently, Mike also lives in Colorado and can't believe the selfishness of our state. Why should I have to pump my own gas with all the transients, honkies, college students, and crackheads walking around? One of these days, I'll pass out from the fumes, and some honky will steal my wallet, a crackhead will rape me, and a transient will drive off in my car. All because my state doesn't take this nanny's duties seriously. Nanny duties. Now, he spelled it with T's, but it works better the other way. Nanny duties. Have you had a nanny duty today? Apparently, Mike Perrone says that I've lived in this state all my life, and I refuse to pump my own gas. I had to do it once in California while visiting my brother and almost died doing it. This is a service only qualified people should perform. I literally park at the pump and wait until someone pumps my gas. I can't even. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> of course, uh, Andy just had to say, man, it's like those people in infomercials who can't perform menial tasks. Do you have trouble pumping your own gas? Guy grabs pump handle and sprays himself in the face. Then do we have the state for you? But wait, there's more. Because Molly, at 14, never been a driver at a full service station. I can not only pump my own gas, but I can also clean my windshield. Although my 7 and 9 year old constantly beg to do so. Not only am I able to apparently watch my children, but I can also fight off transients and manage to not go around smelling like gasoline all day. Apparently, Molly is the real-life Wonder Woman. I'm impressed with you, Molly. And then someone, you know, decided to uh, get a little bit snippy with Molly, although they don't show that comment, but Molly responded by saying, and these are the types of people who like to make fun of the headlines in Florida. Seriously. If you can't figure out how to pump your own gas, you don't get to make fun of anyone. Which, okay, I agree with Molly. Not only is she intelligent, but she's Wonder Woman. Obviously. Of course, you know, Jim Bryant just stepped in and said, Fear not, Oregon! Dun, dun, dun! Here he comes to save the day! Because he has decided to move to Oregon and open a school to teach people how to pump their own gas. It's a short-term business, you say? Ha! I will simply branch out and offer classes on such complicated things as tying your own shoes, dressing yourself, Operating a self-checkout machine, dialing your own phone, mowing your own lawn, splitting your own firewood, how to feed yourself, make your own dinner. But wait, you think that's a top foot? No, there's more. Wash, dry, and fold your own laundry. Of course, there is an extra charge as these are three classes taught separately. Op operating a can opener, manual and electric, counting past 10, and wiping your own butt. Now, I understand, Oregon, adulting is hard, and sometimes you have to show someone how. So, I'm here for you. Now, I'm thinking this is the guy from the Sneetches on the Beaches, and he's going to show up, and he's going to make all your problems go away and walk away with all your money. <laughs> yeah. Of course, uh, Elaine Sullivan was wanting to know if number 12, the wiping your own butt, will be a hands-on experience or more of a lecture, which I am somewhat uh, curious about that myself. Um, let's see. 
Okay, there's someone from Wisconsin who said that it's currently minus 17. And she had to go out and pump her own fuel this morning. So, <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. And then Thomas had to respond to Ashley's, you know, minus 17 and say, then stay there. But I know how to pump the gas, and when compared to the self-serve stations in Oregon, Pacific Pride, for example, the price of gas isn't really any cheaper, so why not have someone pump my gas? Same reason I don't take carts back to the cart area at stores, because they provide personnel to do it for me. I, They have a job, and I can be lazy. Win-win. Well, Thomas, aren't you just a special kind of nutcase? Because have you not really thought that through? Because the reason why they have personnel to do that is because you're a lazy ass. And you cannot put the cart in the cart return. There are many of them around the parking lot. It's not that difficult to do. You just trundle it over there. And then you trundle back to your vehicle. No big deal. And the win-win part of that situation is when you eliminate that job, then costs of doing business goes down. Win-win. Which basically, you know, cost of doing business goes down. So, um, well, actually it wouldn't go up because you would not have to hire the extra personnel because you're a lazy ass, Thomas. And, uh, you know, you could have gotten your stuff a lot cheaper, but no, you had to be a lazy ass. So the rest of us had to pay for your lazy acidness. Thanks, Thomas. Hmm. Okay. Apparently, Samantha Bell works as a flight medic. And hearing the great state of Kansas, she's deployed with the Army. She's done paramedic internship in a city full of meth heads and certified lunatics. She worked as a nurse in a jail. None of these scare me as much as the thought of having to pump fuel in Oregon with all the bad things like having to get out of my car, the handle cooties, or smelling like fuel. And obviously someone gave her shit because she said, I don't dare or don't you dare to lecture me on compassion. You don't know me. The meth heads lost my sympathy the night I was threatened with a knife while doing my job. I will take care of them just as well as any of the other patients, but I refuse to feel sorry for them. So obviously someone was out there going, you're picking on the meth heads. They can't help it that their brains are Swiss cheese. Sure they can. Don't go there. Step away from the meth. I know that's easy to say, but still, why do you want to why do you want to put something in your system that has like anhydrous ammonia in it? Ooh. Really? You do that on purpose? Damn. You're a special kind of stupid, you know that? Ooh. Hey. Apparently, according to Caleb you know, reading the comments here, you'd think the other 48 states are total anarchies run by neglectful parents and people who hate the elderly. Your kid can sit in the car for three minutes it takes to pump the gas. It's not about safety, you're just lazy. Hmm. To which Chelsea had to respond, seriously, someone please tell me if this scenario is doable. Number one, keep your kids restrained in their car seats as they should already be. Anyhow. Number two, pull the release latch to open the gas tank cover. Number three, take keys out of the ignition. Number four, lock your doors. Number five, shut driver door so no doors are left open. All doors are then locked. Number six, pay at the pump and pump your gas. This can be accomplished without going more than feet away from your children while they are inside a locked car, might I, I might add. Seriously, how complicated is it to figure that out? Apparently, it's very complicated, Chelsea. But thank you for giving them, you know, a little path to follow. <sighs> Oh, well. Ooh, 
Christy Lane used a movie phone voice in a world where all the gas station attendants have vanished from the entire state of Oregon. A community of Oregonians must set aside their differences and come together for the sake of survival. In a new world full of vagrants, pungent smells, and worst of all, the crushing weight of adult responsibility. How will these hardy people make it through the harsh winter with clothes on their backs and gas in their tanks? This winter, coming to a theater near you, Oregon Trail, The Gas Wars. Dun, dun, dun! <laughs> oh, Oregon, thank you ever so much for providing some chuckles. There are quite a few other uh, comments on this feed and uh, yeah hmm. dun 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 true Rob works prices never go down but you know what if they didn't have to hire those people those prices okay I just made myself sound stupid those prices would go up anyway but but maybe not so much hmm and you know what we used to have one of those full-service fuel stations, and then they decided that it was just too expensive to have someone that would run out and pump your fuel for you, which I pouted mightily for one tank filling. And then I went, pull up my big girl panties, try not to dribble on myself, and fuel my car myself. And it saved me five cents a gallon. Although, when you consider most of the time, I would only get like 10 gallons worth. So that's saving me 50 cents. Doesn't sound like much, but could be when you're within 50 cents of buying what you really, really, really need. It's all about perspective. Yes, it is. Um, Grimmy Transient. I'm catching up in the chat, by the way. Grimmy Transients hang around at gas stations because they know that if they jump up, somebody that has gone inside and gotten munchy stuff is going to drop it and the transients can go booyah bonus round there's cheetos in that bag so see okay uh do you think oregon should allow self-service gas no <laughs> No, because obviously these people have issues. <laughs> Bless their hearts. Bless their hearts. You got to love them. Just because, you know, they've given us something to chuckle about. Okay. Did I put this? I'm going to put this Grimmy's link over here on mines because, well, if I don't mind, it don't matter. And I want to chuckle. Share a bit of a chuckle. Oh, thank you for being a shiny example of... Because, <gasps> uh, yeah, sometimes you need a shining example of just exactly what a butt pucker brigade looks like. So you can go, right there, right there. That's one. That's one of them right over there. Don't you ever do that. If you grow up to be something like that, I'm going to whoop your ass. <laughs> That's something that my mother would probably say to me. Okay. Hmm. Um, what do I want to go to next? <sighs> you know, I really didn't put a whole heck of a lot of stuff in my, in my pocket because I was just so darn busy just kind of being busy and doing training and all that other fun stuff. And now I'm not real sure what I have to talk about. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I have this one. So, you know, while we're waiting for that big fire to start in Portland, because somebody obviously didn't know how to fuel up their vehicle, which, by the way, uh, when you're fueling up your vehicle and you have it set to where it just kind of keep, you don't have to hold the handle. When it clicks off, put it away. Don't try to put a little bit extra in there because you fuck with the system when you do that. There's your F-bomb for the night. It does. It messes with things, and at least with the newer vehicles, messes with things inside the fuel tank and and with uh, 
evap and all kind of other nonsense and then you wind up getting an idiot light come on and you have to go to the dealership or somebody that's got something that's a code reader that can clear the code or you put a piece of black electrical tape over the idiot light and then you drive until your car drops however you wish to do that but yeah don't try and add a little bit more just leave it because odds are you're not putting much in and the little monetary thing is still going tick 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 so just hang it back up pay your deal and move along it's okay okay from businessinsider.com saw this over on twitter before i got started this evening firefighters reportedly responded to a bedroom fire at the clinton's home in chappaqua now either shitlery had eaten beans last night and bill thought let me light your farts <laughs> which i wouldn't put that past him or they were passing around a hookah or something and you know billy was entertaining <clears throat> some ladies although i can't imagine man you couldn't pay me enough even if i was one of them their ladies you couldn't pay me enough ew but let's see what actually happened, shall we? Firefighters responded to a, a fire at the home of Shitlery and Slick Willie in Chappaqua, New York, on Wednesday. Local police reportedly confirmed the fire but declined to give details. Scanner reports said it was a bedroom fire and has been extinguished. Gee, I wonder if maybe some... Ooh, it was Arkansas. We'll find out later. No injuries were reported, and the cause of the blaze remains unclear. Clintons bought the home at 15 Old House Lane in 1999 for $1.7 million. It is a developing story, so refresh for further details. I really don't care to, although from the outside it looks like quite the swanky residence. I mean, if it didn't have the taint of Slick Willie and Shitlery, I would say, yeah, I'd stay there. But it's got the taint of those two, and I, I, I ain't going there. No. And yes, Oregon is somewhat scary. I saw that as well, Grim. Grimmy's reading my mind. I saw that one earlier today, but apparently I did not put it in my pocket because... I, did I tell you I was busy? I was busy today. This year, um, the uh, uh, the gal that does the bookkeeping and all that other fun stuff for us, um, she and I decided that we're getting all the wackadoodle, all the craziness, all the madness out of the way the first week of the year. And then that way things won't be, things will be able to go smoothly after that. You know, that's our story. We're sticking to it. It sounds good to me. Oh, she was burning emails. Oh, that's what it was. Yeah, that's her story and she's sticking to it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. You go after that. A bomb cyclone. A bomb cyclone. So does it go boom? Apparently, rare snow in the south as north braces for bitter cold. Yeah, it's freaking cold outside. Very, very cold outside. Yes, we have a chilly winter storm to deal with. And it's dealt a chilly blow to the southeastern United States on Wednesday as Floridians marveled at the rare sight of snow and officials warned of icy roads and dangerously low temperatures. Stay inside, whatever you do. Oh, the humanities. No, not them things that swim around in the water. They might freeze. Apparently, residents in the Northeast prepared for windy whiteout conditions and potential power losses. Hmm, potential yeah, they're, they're, 2018 is starting off with a bang. I'm thinking this whole Gregorian calendar thing sucks. I don't know about you guys. Let's see. The storm, referred to by some meteorologists as a bomb cyclone, because, you know, you got to give it a catchy name to get people to go, oh, and then you got to do, do the 
creepy music in the background while you're given the weather forecast because global warming yeah apparently this is a sudden drop in atmospheric pressure i think someone poked a hole in the ozone layer and it's all leaking out it's like a balloon that gets a little pinhole it's just going moving along this was prompt this prompted flight cancellations up been down the East Coast and forced dozens of school districts to cancel or delay classes along the path of the storm, including New York City schools. <clears throat> Just when parents were thinking, thank God they're going back to school. I don't know why I wanted children. <laughs> I did have a few of those moments when mine were little. I really did. It was like, I did this on purpose, too. Wow. Okay. In any case, it was expected to bring more headaches to the mid-Atlantic and northeast overnight when New York City was forecasted to read 5 to 8 inches of snow and up to 10 inches in Queens and Nassau counties. Burr. They just play tic-tac-toe out here with the sky. The National Weather Service said blizzard warnings would take effect along the Virginia coast Wednesday with travel very dangerous to impossible because they might get, wait for it, an inch. Dun-dun-dun! Okay, maybe more. Apparently, this is in a highly populated Hampton Roads region, which they said could receive, oh my God, seriously, up to 12, they could get a foot of snow. Holy smokes, those people will think they've died and gone to hell and it froze over. Apparently, Governor Terry McCull uh, yeah, McCulloch of Virginia declared a state of emergency. Blizzard conditions were expected to begin on Thursday in parts of Maine, Massachusetts, and Rhode Island, according to the forecasters, which Maine, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, they're used to it. It's cold there. They're used to it. Just like out here, we're used to it. You know, this time of year, we see something in the 10-day beyond forecast that says it's going to get shitty out here. Road's going to get slick. You better stock up. People start stocking up. No, we don't do the mad rush. Although there are some that do the last minute mad rush because, well, you're not supposed to drink that milk. We're saving that for when the electricity goes out. But, you know, yeah, there's always a... I, I'm one of them. <laughs> one of them last minute shoppers. I mean, I do stock up and I stay pretty well stocked up. But there's always that, shit, I'm out of milk. I'm out of eggs. Damn it! Whew, okay. Apparently they got plenty of bags of rock salt, said Vic Quinta Quintanar. Quintanar. Okay, thanks Vic for that fun last name. He's the manager of Waterman's Surfside Grill. Ooh, I think it's going to be just a wee bit chilly for Surfside Grill. It's a, a restaurant on the Virginia Beaches Boardwalk. Workers had already closed off patio sections and were preparing for a smaller than usual crowd on Thursday. Don't be surprised if no one shows up, hon. Seriously. There's going to be people going, are you kidding? <laughs> I saw a snowflake <laughs> and it didn't have two legs. Though much of the South is accustomed to occasional winter snowfalls, Wednesday's storm was setting records and setting teeth on edge. Hmm. Um. Okay. I vi I had to visualize teeth on edge. In a region where even a couple of inches of snow has a potential to hobble an entire metropolis. Mm hmm. I know people from those areas, and I just go, really? Hmm. This was um. It says, as was in the infamous case in Atlanta in 2014, which, you know, when that comes through, FEMA, in their infinite wisdom, were turning people away that were showing up that actually knew how to drive in such conditions, and they were bringing supplies, much-needed supplies. And FEMA was saying, no. And then union people were going, you ain't union, you ain't got a union card, you can't come in. Brilliance abounds. 
Hmm. Apparently in Georgia, where Governor Nathan Deal declared an, an, an emergency for 28 northern county or southern counties, snow fell across rural areas in Savannah, a city that normally swelters. Okay, snow fell across rural areas, oh, and in Savannah. And it helps if you read the whole sentence, Grams. On Wednesday, Savannah's temperature hovered in the 20s as the city recorded about an inch of snow. <gasps> Although I do feel really bad for all of the homeless people that are out there. It's like, come on, people. Do you just watch the news and see those of us out here that deal with this shit all the time and go, I'd never lived there. <laughs> Guess what? You don't have to live here to get this shit. Mother Nature will say, here, have a dose. Just cuz. Apparently in North Carolina, Governor Roy Cooper declared a state of emergency and his office said the National Guard was on standby. Raleigh Durham area tried to record or tied to record a low of nine degrees that had been set in 1887. Wow, the other day nine degrees would have been a tropical heat wave out here. Governor Henry McMaster of South Carolina said the storm would move beyond his state overnight, but he warned that temperatures would remain frigid for the weekend. Why? Because Mother Nature is feeling a bit peckish, don't you know? He urged residents to ensure people and pets were safe. If they can't get into heat, they'll freeze to death and they'll be gone. Yes, people, when someone freezes to death, they are gone. No, the shell still remains, but they, what makes them what they are, is gone. You can't thaw them out and they come back. So all you people that got pets outside and you think, they got fur coat, they'll be fine. No, they won't. Apparently, the same thing will happen to people who are outside. Ooh. Yes, it will. A grocery store in, in Charleston, South Carolina, Chris Brown, a father of two daughters, stocked up on food and prepared to be snowed in. I can't believe how heavy it is, he said, of the snow. I'm heading home to play with the kids. There you go. Go have fun. And you know, I saw the coolest thing the other day. Somebody has a snowball maker. It's way cool. It's like uh, it's like tongs, only it makes snowballs. And so you just go along and you go, chunk, 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 and you make snowballs. And I thought, well, that's nothing. I got popcorn ball makers. I can do the same thing. My hands get down in the snow, but I can do that too. And I don't have to pay nineteen ninety nine for mine because <laughs> I got mine from my mom. Apparently, an ER doctor in Atlanta said this is the most challenging winter because of global warming. The new round of shivering prolonged um, what has already been a difficult period in the country's emergency rooms. In Atlanta area, where temperatures were hovering around freezing on Wednesday, but were expected to plunge into the teens overnight, I feel for you, that's kind of where it's at right now. Doctors said that they had been seeing an unusual number of patients with weather-related emergencies. Why? Because they don't teach common sense. That's why. When it's cold outside, you try and get inside. Or you huddle together with others. Shared body heat. That's not necessarily just for sex, okay? What's that? Felt the snow removal system in the country was too male-centric and wanted more gender-equal strategy. Ah, so instead of clearing the roads in the business districts where the men work, the snow trucks were ordered to plow near schools, sidewalks, and bike paths, which women were more likely to use. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Well, isn't that wonderful? Jeepers. Yeah, because them there... Men folk. It's the men folk. Are you new at this? Yes, Grim, I'm new at this. I don't know if you were talking to me or not, but yeah, I am. <laughs> oh, feelings.
things. I've lost my feelings. My extremities have gone numb. Go inside! Oh, and then you have the homeless people who can't go inside, and it's like, some bitch! Okay, let's see. Moving along, moving along. Okay, here we go. What's this about a bomb cyclone? I want to see what this, I want to see why they called it a bomb cyclone. Apparently, when discussing the storm, some weather forecasters referred to it as a bomb cyclone. Calling it a bomb sounds dire, but such storms are not exceedingly rare. There was one in New England recently. You know, it's called winter. Winter weather. What makes a storm a bomb is how fast the atmospheric pressure falls. Falling atmospheric pressure is a characteristic of all storms. Uh-huh. Yeah, happens out here all the time in summertime. Yeah, that's when you go stand outside and look for them there donators. By definition, the barometric pressure must drop by at least 24 millibars in 24 hours for a storm to be called a bomb. Bum, bum, bomb. So, here's how it works. Deep drops in barometric pressure occur. Oh, I should do this in a very professional way, shouldn't I? Deep drops in a barometric pressure occur when regions of warm air meet ones of cold air. The air starts to move, and the rotation of the Earth creates a cyclonic effect. The rotation of the Earth creates a... But, if the Earth rotates at a thousand miles an hour, don't we have a thousand mile an hour cyclonic effect going already? Is this an extra bucking against the wind kind of thing? Someone please explain that to me. The direction is counterclockwise to the north, northern hemisphere, leading to winds that come out of the northeast or a nor'easter. And you know what? When they come up with a name like a nor'easter, that means it's happened before. You know. That's what happened at the end of October, when warm air from the remnants of a tropical storm over the Atlantic collided with a cold front coming from the Midwest. Among other impacts, more than 80,000 electric customers in Maine lost power as high winds toppled trees. Da! A similar effect was occurring Wednesday as warm air over the ocean met extremely cold polar air that had descended over the east. Pressure was expected to fall quickly from Florida northward. Global warming! Be afraid. So why is it so cold? Because of climate change! <laughs> Oh, Lord, I listened to something the other day. Well, actually, I think it was maybe last night, actually, about um, climate change and how we should feel bad. And we're, we're just such heartless heifers. And, you know, saying that CO2 is causing all of this climate change. And someone pretty much called out this young lady and said, you know, if you'd planted trees, they breathe CO2 and and expel oxygen. There you go. And actually, if you look at ice core data, this ain't the first rodeo for Mother Nature when it comes to these cold things and these climate shifts. Mother Nature does it from time to time. She's a wee bit moody. It's just that her mood swings take a lot longer than those of us of the Ooman persuasion. Dun dun dun. Oh, climate change, bomb cyclone, snowstorms, it's freaking winter. What do you expect? Seriously. Winter came in with a bang out here. Y'all didn't seem to give shit. Out here is where we grow your grains for, oh, bread and pasta and all kind of other things. Out here is where we grow your cattle for your burgers and your steaks. Out here is where we grow a lot of chickens and a lot of pigs. So, y'all didn't give a shit about us. We're just kind of going, yeah, it's cold. We know enough to stay inside. <laughs> mm. 
crazy, crazy people. <sighs> oh, well. I should stop picking on everybody. That's very mean of me. <laughs> and yet, it's amusing in my own perverse way. Oh, there, ir there is no violence playing for those that are suffering the burr. Because, yeah, you move to a place where you only get the burr once in a while. We deal with it annually. Hmm. Okay. You know what? I think I'm going to. I think I'm going to. I don't know what yet, but I think I'm going to. Actually, Kim Trails. Hey, 17 reasons why you can't. Oh. <laughs> Hi, Kim Trails. I had lots of you in the sky out here earlier. They're probably still out there, but I'm ignoring them now. I did my little mantra all the way home because they pissed me off. Damn it. I'm going to go the pig. I'm going to see what happened on this date in history. And you know, I found out the other day just exactly who looks this stuff up. It's not Hambo. It's not Porkus. It's Hambo's lovely bride that does all of this. Way to go, woman. She's the Wonder Woman. So, the word of the day is Mitmouth. It is a Hamboism. Not to be confused with the likely fate of a clumsy baseball player, it denotes a former Bay State governor's legendary ability to switch positions on one or more issues on the fly, then swear with commendable conviction that he's the gold standard of consistency when it comes to his political positions. Ah, Mittens, y'all remember him, don't ya? Yeah. In the quotable quote section, it's always easier for hacks to solve problems that don't exist than it is to address their constituents' legitimate government-perpetrated problems. Yeah. Thanks, Hambo, for that little tasty tidbit. That is true. Yeah, they can always solve all kind of problems because, you know, they make work. They look busy as opposed to, you know, dealing with the mess that they made every time they signed a dotted line or pushed a button. They're very good at pushing buttons, don't you know? They're better than I am. So, let's see. A fish story, a lawyer's fish story. Apparently, Bill had an awful day fishing on the lake, sitting in the blazing sun all day without catching a single one. On his way home, he stopped at the fish market and ordered four catfish. He told the salesman, pick four large ones and throw them at me, please. And the salesman replied, why do you want me to throw them at you? To which Bill responded, because I want to tell my wife that I caught them. Ba -dum -bum -bum. Good job, Bill. I'm proud of you. Yay. Okay. <clears throat> On to this date in history. The 3rd of January, 1825. Scottish social reformer, factory owner, Owen, or Robert Owen, buys 30,000 acres in Indiana, sets up a utopia that bans money and private property, an exercise in collectivism that lasts four years. Did you know about that? I did not. That sounds rather interesting. I may have to research that one. Also, this date in history, the 3rd of January, 1847, a quiet little Mexifornia town, Yerba Buena changes its name to San Francisco, a name that will live in infamy for rational adults from sea to shining sea. Yes, I think Yerba fit better. Yerba Buena. Mm -hmm. Thank you, you wonderful folks over here on the pig. What you got going on? You got a New Year's thing going on. What you got going on for New Year's? They got Johnny Carson, a 2018 wish list. Shall we? I think so. Grimmy did the RLM prediction. Let's do the 
pig wish list, shall we? I have time. Eventually, we'll recover from our New Year's festivities, just enough to notice that things have changed in calendar land. Unhappily, when we're sober enough, temporarily, to deduce that it's 2018, it will be too late to do this rant any justice. Instead, we're doing this the last week of 2017, and I'm reading it in 2018, so there, Hambo. Another new year? So fucking what? I asked the same question, and the answer I got isn't suitable for our, uh, so saith Porcus, family-friendly publication. Porcus, you old poo. My laughter, and a not-so-subtle reference to his precious pinups page elicited a memorable outpouring of publisher profanity. Unfortunately, that isn't free state of the pig street legal either. <sighs> so, with the onset of a new year, there are certain givens. Most important given is the time-honored pig ritual. What ritual, you may ask? Well, you'll love it, because once again, we usher in this annual speed bump on our agenda by hanging a new hotties who hit us with a restraining order calendar on the wall of the top secret pig bunker. You guys, really, seriously, did you do that again? You shameless hussies. Out in the world, the usual suspects are disinterring old dirt with those year in review stories blah 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 other news nitwits swim in the shallow end of the journalism pool by posting a list of socially acceptable new year's resolutions my new year's resolution this year was i was not going to make any new year's resolutions so there so with the free state of pig join this pathetic parade i don't think so you really should know better by now so if it's a list of piggish, r piggish resolutions that you're expecting, you're still delusional, but getting warmer. So what are we going to do? do what do you actually expect us to channel our technically feasible but elusive inner warm and fuzzy? <laughs> no, not you guys. Would you believe it if we promised to give certain airline seat-stealing elected tormentor from the Lone Star State anger management tips instead of kicker in the fat ass? Would you believe it for a second if we offered Whoopi, the wildebeest, badly needed beauty tips instead of the monogrammed bag to put over her head? Would you believe us if we offered that legendary nad snipper Bruce Jenner a year's supply of V for Vendetta masks, instead of exiling him to the carnival sideshow. No, I wouldn't believe it. Would you buy it if we extolled the selfless sacrifice Jesse makes in, ex in the name of activism, instead of calling him a race card waving extortionist? No, I don't believe you. If a year of re in review is out and we're not willing to resolve to change our piggish ways, so what's left? Well, it's the height of the prediction season. Dun, dun, dun. And this is a new one. A new year game we're willing to play. We're willing to play, but as usual, we'll put it in our own piggish spin. It might help if you think this is a piggish preview of coming attractions. Woohoo! So, we won't follow the herd who peer deeply into their crystal balls or read tea leaves. Crystal balls, that sounds painful. Reading tea leaves, I wonder if you use bifocals for that, go tarot card bonkers or peruse their horoscope tables or get an inside scoop from disembodied voices. No, not the pigs. We won't imitate those faux visionaries who predict annually an assassination of our orange-haired POTUS. Unlike those reality-insulated mystics, we suspect that moonbat threats are essentially hot air. We won't channel our inner Mayan, a people who, despite all their alleged prescience about future events, never detected the abrupt end of their own empire in the immediate future. Ooh, 
Didn't see that one coming, did ya? We won't overload our vaulted bullshit detector 9000 by feeding it the demented gibberish of the blithering idiot Nostradamus. We won't invoke our inner herald camping by trying and failing miserably to read the future after egregiously, repeatedly misinterpreting certain parts of the tomb. We won't pick low-hanging fruit with prognostications about earthquakes in Mexifornia or jihadakazi attacks on America or volcanic eruptions in the Ring of Fire or death of celebrities who already have one foot in the grave. Nope. They're not going to do that. They're not going to be psychic. They're not going to be doing any of that crazy stuff. This is going to be a we'd like to see followed up with what we expect to see. So what we'd like to see is a U First Amendment to all state and federal cons constitutions which would require the elected tormentors who sponsor any all-intrusive nanny ledger crap to road test the proposed law personally for six to twelve months. If he, she, he, she, or it still thinks it's spiffy after living it, the bill can be considered by the full legislature. We expect to see legicrap business as usual from elected tormentors who exempt themselves from the intrusive liberty infringing steaming loads that they impose on we the people. What we'd like to see is a full-blown political civil war breakout with the jackass party pitting the Bernie Brigade against the party's old guard. What we expect to see is a slow but steady shift of support from the one and the bitch to the younger, violence-prone, no-shit Marxists. We'd like to see a powerful backlash against the much in too intrusive nanny state by Trumpel's regime on behalf of we the people. But what we expect to see is a Trumpel Silskin regime tussling with the Beltway Establishment, Chamber of Commerce, RNC, DNC, MSN, who are determined to turn we the people into we the sheeple. What we'd like to see is North Korea put out of our misery when Uncle Sam punches the pukes, um, punches the punk's ticket, turning Basement Boy into Kim Jong Coffin Boy. What we expect to see is he lobs more missiles at us while hiding behind Big Daddy China. Mmm, mmm. I don't want to see either one of those guys. We'd like to see Uncle Sam cutting all ties with the UN. Yes, I would love to see that. We expect to see Trumpel Stilskin severely cutting back on payments to the Black Helicopter Club. Well, even that is inching ever so slowly in the proper direction. What we'd like to see is a torrid love affair featuring Caitlyn Jenner and Roseanne which ends in a no-holds-barred fight over which one gets top billing in their sex tape. I don't want to see that. Apparently, they're going to keep hope alive on that one. You guys can watch that one for me and give me the Reader's Digest version. Yeah. Ooh. No, I don't even want that. What we'd like to see is the NFL stop screwing up a great game with all these asinine rules. At this rate... A player on defense will need to get written permission from the commissioner's office before he's allowed to make a tackle, which I don't doubt that one bit. What we expect to see is an accelerated campaign by the league office to completely destroy our favorite sport, which, you know, as soon as I saw them throwing a flag for excessive celebration, I went, <laughs> no, this has gotten even too stupid to keep me entertained. What we'd like to see is the return of the classic no bullcrap Big Apple denizen whose first order of business will be kicking the rabid Marxist moon bats out of power. What we expect to see 
is an accelerated destruction of one of our great cities until it's indistinguishable from Detroit. Even Hiroshima looks better than Detroit. What we'd like to see is our border slammed shut by Trumpel's wall and every border jumping scumbag from sea to sign, shining sea sent home. The only problem with slamming those borders shut, hun, is that it slams us in. Point that out. What they expect to see is the swamp rats fighting meaningful border enforcement every step of the way, which, mm, once again, I have to say, distraction, smoke and mirrors, look at the shiny bobble, there's brown people sneaking across, be afraid. They might make it to Oregon, and then people will really be afraid to pump their own gas. What we'd like to see is the expulsion of Marxist moonbats who undermine our liberty from the bloated federal bureaucracy. What we expect to see is business as usual. What we'd like to see is Trump make Congress nuke Barry's destructive dangleberry care. Oh, see, they can't do that unless they have something to replace it because government never scales back. Ever. Ever. What we expect to see is, well, they're keeping their fingers crossed on that one. Honey, that's not going to happen. I hate to tell you that. Because uh, the insurance companies and the medical industry and the legal industry want dangleberry death care in place. Uh, what we'd like to see is all of Dangleberry's men and women frog-marched and thrown in the slammer for their crimes against our liberty. What we expect to see is Attorney General Sessions' disappearing act to continue. Yeah. What we'd like to see is a resurgence of pin-your-ears-back, hard-charging rock and roll. That would be cool. But what we expect to see is more wimpy alleged music by Pop-Tarts whose videos are softcore porn with, uh, for hormonal gorillas. Ugh. Eck. What we'd like to see is food Nazis forced to eat only the tasteless slop that they try to cram down our throats. There you go, Michelle. How about you eat what you said our school children only need this to get through the day? But what we expect to see is the American diet reduced to rice cakes and crabgrass. Men parts are edible, you know. What we'd like to see is a rapture-like event which beams all those rabid, rampaging Marxist moonbats, jackass party, and its low-information chad punchers to their own off-planet circle of hell. Let me think about this a minute. I could do with that. We expect to see a continued, possibly stepped-up Marxist moonbat Trump sucks frontal assault on our inalienable individual liberties. Why? Because I'm offended. What we'd like to see is the egregiously intrusive nanny state expelled from American schools, allowing educraption to move to education. Mm, that would be wonderful. Actually teaching children things that they will use later in life. Yeah. <laughs> hey, there you go. What we expect to see is some minor improvement like a rollback of the steaming load called Common Core. I would love to see that. Minimum. What we'd like to see is a talking point toll charge. I think it's time to make the elected tormentors pay for their egregious overuse of talking points and buzzwords. If they want to spout identically worded drivel, I think they should pay for the privilege. One person gets a free pass. Everyone else who uses it must pay $1,000 noise pollution fine, the proceeds of which go to the Tea Party. No, not to the Tea Party. Proceeds of which go back to the people. In other words, why don't you just eradicate the IRS? <laughs> and that way, we the people don't have to worry about those extortionists with guns coming and taking what we earned. What we expect to see is a talking point buzzword tidal wave which will loom larger with the trumple Silskin regime in charge. Because, well, you know, they're all grouping together because he's very bad. 
What we'd like to see is all elected tormentors subjected to a mandatory TSA grope dope mauling every time they fly. Furthermore, members of Congress must use commercial flights, the cheap seats, of course, whenever they travel. What we expect to see is we the people get groped while our employees sail through untouched. <clears throat> what we'd like to see is Congress put under a microscope since the Congressional Clown Posse thinks it's utterly spiffy to keep a database on each citizen's internet activity, they need to lead by example. Let the government track each elected tormentor's internet usage, then publish it where anyone can look at it. What we expect to see is business as usual. We'd like to see elected tormentors suffering once a year America's rational adults will get to vote, American Idol style, for those elected tormentors who have earned some special abuse. The top 30 vote-getters will be packed off to a remote, terminally hostile location for a month of how badly do you want this job reality show fun and games, which were dreamed up by sovereign American individuals. That could be interesting. What we expect to see is our employees reveling in the perks of their office instead of doing the fucking job we sent them there to do. Which, you know, we were dumb enough to think that they would actually do a job that we, you know, they volunteered for. They paid lots of good money to get that job. Yep. What? What? Guillotine works, Grim. Guillotine works. Starting with the big toe, because I'm thinking that maybe the end of the toenail on the big toe is probably the amount of brain usage <laughs> that's going on. So cut that out right off the bat, and then work your way up. Okay. Um, what we'd like to see is youngins prepared for success by reintroducing failure into their lives until they've experienced the vital growing pain, failure, then discovered its lessons, Moonbeam and Little Johnny aren't fully prepared for the rigors of adult life. And trust me, adulting is hard. There's a lot of people right now that are having a really tough time with it. We expect to see individuals who never face failure, because it's pain and it's lessons, yeah, they never face it as children, and they enter adulthood utterly unprepared for life's inevitable sucker punches. In the nads, whether they be male or female or what other sexual gender persuasion you choose, punch em, sucker punch in the nads. Because that's what life will do to you. <laughs> Seriously, I'm, I'm sorry, honey. But, you know, there are people out there that won't put up with your bullshit. For one reason or another, the following fervent wishes didn't make the top story cut. So, here we go. We'll see if if this will work for you guys listening out there in Grammy Land or Cybernetic Superhighway Land. Or Eliminum Land. What we'd like to see is Tuesday Tatas. On the first Tuesday of each month, the women named by the Tata Selection Committee, or the pig staff, would, as a patriotic jester, lift America's spirits by publicly bearing their tatas. Flash, did you talk to these guys? You and your boob thing? I think Flash is behind that. What they'd like to see is a Trump family hottie bikini calendar, with all proceeds going to our wounded vets. There is an idea. That's not bad, guys. They'd like to see Dangleberry kidnapped and never seen again when nobody pays his ransom. Why don't they take Michelle with them? What they'd like to see is the EPA, FCC, and Educrap Department defanged and downsized. I would like to see them eliminated. What we'd like to see 
is the chronically offended believes the Constitution protects them from being offended must wear a sensory deprivation helmet which will block out all outside sights and sounds. There you go. Then they won't be offended. What we'd like to see is rational adult commuters get some firepower. Certified by PIG, rational adults will be authorized to equip their rides with those miracles of modern weaponry, asshat-seeking missiles. Only problem with that. On any given Sunday, I could be considered an asshat. Not real sure I'm keen on that idea, guys. What we'd like to see is Courtney, my nads, see more action than a Vegas crap table, Kardashian, Feature uh, feature length sex tape. No, no, no. I don't want to. Is she horizontally gifted? I don't care. I don't care, guys. That one is one. No, I can see why that didn't make it. I don't know why I read it. Yes. We are the pigs. Guilty of wishful thinking. Probably. But we prefer to call it reading the usual suspects their rights. We'd like to see 2018 filled to overflowing with pleasant surprises. We'd like to see a 2018 that ends up with a stronger America, a safer world, and a resurgence of individual liberty. We expect a 2018 filled with unexpected thrills, chills, and spills. We expect to spread our usual unrelenting enlightenment about whatever objective reality throws at us. We expect to have a Big time, peakish fun in 2018. Why, well, thank you, Hambo and Porkus. And I'm sure you will have a big piggish fun time in 2018. And whatever you expect, honey, you need to start with yourself first. Um, do what, Beth? Yeah, you can... I know they can't. Uh, let's see. Oh, can we dose them, please? Ooh. In a pen? Sports stadium when it's hot? That would be funny. That would be funny. Bite, 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 bite. There you go. Oh, you piggish guys. You, you just so funny. And you know, you did have some really good ideas. But you got to realize that it's got to start at home first. So why don't you put those piggish ideas to action and I'll put some of them that I agreed with to action as well. And then we'll see if that doesn't just ripple out in the collective timeline. See what kind of piggishness we can raise this next year. That would be fun, I think. So, let's see. I am going to check out some recommended stuff in my pocket just to see. Oh, hey. Here's something that I kind of like. Our kids were just so ungrateful. This is why some families are boycotting presents this year. It's from the WashingtonPost.com. So... Let's see. Let us see what's going on here, shall we? Because there are an awful lot of children out there that are very ungrateful little snots. And part of that is because parents just keep giving and giving and giving and giving. And you know what? When a child acts up because their toy isn't way cool enough, then you take it away and you give it to someone who would appreciate it and you tell them, fine. You didn't like that? You get nothing. How do you like that? Sounds like loads of fun. Moosey's here. Hey, Moosey. Oh, yay, Moosey's here. Okay. Kids are so ungrateful. So, Becky Svare has made a radical decision. She won't buy any more Christmas presents. Booyah on you, Becky. Started a few years ago as an experiment with her extended family. The holiday season began as it often did, with a dozen family members drawing names out of a hat. But instead of buying gifts for each other, 
they had to come up with a meaningful experience to share with their designated person. Suggested price, 20 to $25. That sounds kind of cool. Safari's children took their aunts kayaking. Her brother took his nine-year-old nephew for a ride on his Harley. Then out for sushi and a trip to the local reptile center. Others went to the zoo. See, this is cool, making memories instead of getting things, spending time with each other instead of getting stuff that the baby will play with the box that it came in. You had to be somewhat creative with it, she said. And hey, and she is a blogger who lives near Deland, Florida, which is near Orlando. They all agreed that it was better than buying things people don't need. Across the country, families are hearing a similar refrain. Fewer items, please, more experiences. Which, yeah, that's way cool. Doing things together as a family. It's a movement that's picked up steam in recent years as part of a broader push away from consumerism. And even retailers are taking notice. Major chains like Best Buy, Apple, Nordstrom are now incorporating cooking classes, photography workshops, and even manicures inside their stores as a way to attract customers who want to do more than just shop. I hate to shop. Even grocery shop. I hate it. Ugh. Even on Amazon, because I'll see this and I'll go, ooh, that looks, and then I'll put that in my wish list, and then I'll look at, and I'll go, ooh, that look, and I'll, and then next thing I know, my wish list is bazillion items long, and so I have to just delete the whole damn thing and start over again. <laughs> uh, this holiday season, retail an analysts say that there has been a discernible shift in gift giving as Americans think beyond traditional presents. Nearly 40% of shoppers plan to give gift cards, um, event tickets, or other intangible gifts. This is according to market research firm NPD Group. And although overall holiday spending is projected to rise about 4% to $680 billion this year, they don't tell you that's because of cost of living increases, <clears throat> inflation, Americans say they will spend less on presents. On average, or an average of $608 on gifts for family, friends, and co-workers, down from $621 last year. This is according to the National Retail Federation. I didn't come anywhere near clo close to that. Anywhere near. Actually, my daughter's and their spouses got to share a gift and my grandchildren each got one thing. That's it. <laughs> I was and I tell you what, I um I'll bet I spent less than two hundred. Oh well. We live in a world of abundance where most of us just have too many things. And Jeffrey Gallick, a professor who studies consumer behavior at Carnegie Mellon University, said, People are starting to realize that items really aren't that important anymore. It's a mind shift going on. Can you feel it? Also helping the movement is the lack of novelty items at the stores. You know, people are actually wanting something more novel than things. I think is what's going on, at least with what I'm seeing. I tell you what, dealing with the general public and working at a car dealership, a lot of families traveled for the holidays as opposed to buying things, you know, things that you have to dust or put away or take care of or maintain. They took a trip as a family and they drove so that they could spend time and yeah, there's bickering and all that other fun stuff, but you eventually get past that. Or at least the ones that I've spoken with have. A lot of retailers are carrying the same old stuff that they've been hawking for five years, said Mark Cohen, who is a director of retail studies at Columbia Business School. And people are saying, 
Uncle Henry's already got a black sweater. In fact, he's got two that still have the tags on. So why should we get him a new one? Let's do something else instead. You know, my mom, she gets stamps from me because she mails lots of letters. She loves stamps. So I get her stamps. Lots of stamps. And fam I have family members that each got her uh, gift cards for the grocery store that she shops at. She won't have to buy groceries all year because she got enough in gift cards. Booyah! Academics note that there has been a shortage of research in recent years to back up the idea that people derive more joy from experiences than goods. The trend has been good for the likes of StubHub, the online purveyor of ports, con uh, ports, sports, concert, and theater tickets, says sales of gift cards are up 50% over last year. Celebrities, too, are increasingly speaking out against holiday consumerism. Apparently, Mila Kunis said in a recent interview that she and her husband, Ashton Kutcher, wouldn't be buying gifts for their children this year. Yay! But vowing to cut back on presents is one thing. Actually doing so can be a years-long process. It can be tough to get family members on board. And even the most dedicated of gift boycotters can feel a tinge of panic when a few days before Christmas there isn't much under the tree. Well, then don't put a tree up. That was my solution. <laughs> Mainly because the cat climbs in there and knocks it down anyway. And, and, well, I don't really have room for a tree. So, yeah, I just didn't do it. I haven't for years. Social norms can be a difficult thing to overcome, said Ross Steinman, who is a professor of consumer psychology at Widener University in Chester, PA. If there is an understanding in your family that there should be a tower of gifts under the Christmas tree every year, it's really hard to change that. Actually, a couple years ago, I told my grandchildren that what they need to do is... Um, they need to go to one of those gift trees and they need to pick out a name and then we will go and get something for a child that's probably not going to get something from anyone else. That's been the last few years and this year I did buy each of my grandchildren one thing but yeah they've pretty much been told this is what's going on and I'm doing it in your name but yeah this is how it's gonna work. Uh, let's see so, it's taken nearly two decades, but Althea Smart says her family has mostly stopped buying Christmas gifts. It started back in 1999, and she says when she moved to New York to take a job as a flight attendant, she had a tiny apartment and traveled often, which meant she didn't have room for extra items. But convincing her family in Tennessee, where she grew up, receiving a whopping two dozen gifts each Christmas was a difficult story. She started slowly, or so she thought, suggesting a limit of one gift per person. I knew we couldn't go cold turkey, but it was still a total disaster. Because Smart, um, a 43-year-old and a travel writer for in Portland, there were a lot of hurt feelings and tears, even though we didn't have money. It was really important to my parents to be able to buy us material things. Her mother, in particular, was crestfallen. But lately, she said, they found a groove. And her mother agrees. A few years ago, she surprised the family with new luggage and a cruise to Alaska. Last year, she took her grandsons on a four-day trip to Chicago. And she makes photo books for her daughters and bakes cookies for her son-in-laws. Booyah! I'm getting a calendar from my eldest with pictures of the grandbabies on strategic dates. So I get to see different pictures all year round. I think it's awesome. At first, it was almost, or it almost felt embarrassing, said Campbell, who works for a tour company in Nashville. I'd always been so proud that I was able to give everyone so much during the holidays. But it's getting easier, she said. 
although she does sometimes stash a couple last-minute McDonald gift cards under the tree for her grandsons. Don't go McDonald's, honey. I still don't worry about it, about finding ways to create that oh-wow moment. Okay, so... I'm trying to find where they... Oh, there's Read More. Apparently... This really wasn't that headline grabbed me, and it really doesn't. I mean, people are just, it's not because people are ungrateful, it's because they had too much shit, and they're tired of accumulating too much shit, so the headline is somewhat misleading. I know that's shocking, that a headline would be misleading, but this one was. What's going on, Moosey? Oh, okay. Let me see. I'm scrolling up to check out what's going on up here. Okay. So, let me put this over on the effing site as well. You know, I really think there are a lot of people that are shifting instead of, you know, purchasing a lot of crap. I'm, a lot of my family is making you know, if if there are any gifts exchanged, they are making something. Or, I mean, for, for years upon years, I got my mom magazine subscriptions, like to Reader's Digest or the Smithsonian, magazines that she liked to read. But she's decided that she goes to the library quite a bit, and she doesn't really need those magazines anymore. So I started getting her stamps so that she could write letters to all of her friends. And she goes through quite a few stamps in a year. Um... But, you know, our family just really, we quit doing a lot of that gift exchange stuff simply because of logistics, number one. And number two, everybody's got too much crap already. We're trying to find a place to get rid of the crap we've already got. And so, yeah, having some time to, you know, being able to spend quality time together, that is awesome. That's the kind of stuff that we look forward to, and that's the kind of stuff that, you know, we try and make plans for, you know, to get some time to where we can all get together and just spend some quality time giving each other shit or um, watching a video of something or just laughing or eating entirely too much, which my family tends to do because we all like to cook. <laughs> so... You know, there's all kind of things that you can do other than buy gifts. Or other than give money. There's a lot of people out there that just give money. And yeah. I don't want I don't want somebody's money because they feel guilty because they don't know what to buy me. It's like I don't want that shit. Just if you know if you if you feel as though you need to do something but you don't know what go and find one of those christmas trees and buy a gift for a child you know or take a box full of food to a place that feeds the homeless you know something like that that would make me happy as all get out and you don't even have to tell me about it just go do it i would just be happy just knowing that somebody is out there doing something nice instead of getting me a thing that I don't need or sending me money because they feel guilty go do something something that's memorable and that makes a difference for someone else trust me I don't need any more <laughs> well I would take more money but yeah I don't want it because someone's guilting ah okay get this shared over here on mines as well and then, let's see. Oh, wow. I am getting close to the end of my time. Wow. Um, let's see. Marriage standards change. Hmm. Yeah, I no longer believe in marriage either. 
not not the whole yeah I think there's entirely too and that's because of a mindset thing just my personal opinion entirely too many people out there that think once they get that piece of paper you belong to and it's not oh lord here we go flasher this one is for you I'm gonna close out the show with this one headline grabber let's hope it kind of sort of goes along with hey it's from fatherly.com in their health science and psychology section what men see when they look at boobs according to science <laughs> all righty then apparently women's breasts are both a source of baby food and occasional awe but men's relationship with them is more complicated than keeping their eyes up there in fact how you uh, perceive boobs could make the difference between you being poor hungry or dead research suggests <laughs> oh apparently size matters but not as much as you think the rumor that men tend to prefer medium to large breasts is true, but less sexually restricted men seem to care for far less or care far less about size. Um, some research suggests that medium boobs are in fact the most popular among men and women. So for breasts, bigger isn't always better. In fact, studies suggest large breasts would be better off maintaining a C average. Hey, I'm average. Hey. <laughs> so, um, how much money you make may influence your boob preference. So if you like small boobs, don't worry. You're probably just rich. According to one paper, the study published in the Journal of Socioeconomics found that men with fewer financial resources gravitated towards larger breasts, while men who are more well-off financially tend towards smaller ones. On a biological level, perhaps wealthier men innately sense that they don't need those extra fatty reserves. <laughs> really? Thanks. That feels so much better. They can just grab a steak dinner and call it a night. Well... And yet, all the women that are trying to catch those wealthy men get the big kazumbers. And they will be treated as a pair of big kazumbers. Okay. If you don't want to stare, don't view boobs on an empty stomach. Really? <laughs> don't worry, it's not because you'll attempt to breastfeed. The aforementioned study also found that boob preferences are broadly related to available resources and that when men are sa um, satiated, they're less drawn to huge knockers. The study also found that men who prefer big breasts tend to be more sexist than others. Hungry and sexist? What a bad combination. Wow. Woman get in there and make me a sandwich. You know what, honey? After making love to a woman and you expect her to go make a sandwich, you obviously ain't much of a man if she's still able to get up and go make you a sandwich. You don't deserve one then. Just saying. Okay, staring at boobs might make you live longer. Okay, guys, here you go. Now you can use this excuse. Apparently, there's some evidence that staring at boobs may increase a man's longevity. <laughs> that works on multiple levels a 2012 study found that positive thinking had a positive effect on long-term health choices particularly when it came to taking blood pressure medication while not all experts are convinced many have deduced that looking at boobs is one such way to achieve a positive mental attitude flash I swear to God you helped write this, didn't you? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, uh, let's see. Oh, okay. Um, another German study concurred that looking at boobs for 10 minutes a day was good for a man's cardiovascular health. 
All of these benefits, of course, only exist if the boob gazing is permitted. Otherwise, staring at boobs on the sly can significantly shorten your life if you catch our drift. So in other words, if you're just oogling or if you're being a peeping Tom or something, yeah, that's not necessarily good for your, your longevity because, you know, if you're peeping Tom, someone might shoot your ass. And lastly, being a dad changes how you think about boobs. Preferring larger breasts can indicate a lot of things, but it might just mean you're ready to be a father. That's what some research suggests. The study found that men who did not have kids but wanted them were generally into larger boobs, and dudes who had no familiar aspirations were content with smaller pairs. In this case, dads who like big boobs can breathe a sigh of relief. Your preference doesn't mean you're a creep or sexist or even hungry. You just want what's best for your kids. Kilimanjaro, my wife can feed a small African nation. Well, Flash, that one's for you. Although I think Grimmy probably, there's probably quite a few guys that are, yeah. Oh, they have shop classes at your boys' school, Moosey? How awesome is that? We don't have shop classes anymore out here in the boonies, and it pisses me off. Kids used to make some of the most amazing things in wood shop, and they also had uh, um, auto, auto shop where you had, um, well, it was back before you had so damn much toxic shit. They had auto body repair, and they um, also had mechanics. And, you know, they had all kinds of cool things at school. And now they got rid of almost all of that stuff out here where I live. And it totally sucks. Totally sucks. But I guess that's the way you're going to roll. Okay. Dang, I am just about out of time. Y'all been listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair here on this Wacka 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 Doodle Wednesday. I will be back on Friday for the Freaker Friday edition, the first Freaker Friday of the year. Booyah! That's three F's. <laughs> Not a bad thing. Not a bad thing. So, um, I'm just gonna, I'm trying to figure out which little emoticon while I'm blabbering on. <laughs> because <laughs> I'm thinking yeah this is a definitely a flasher thing flash will like this Cirque will get a chuckle too I'm sure so in any case I will be back on Friday also Friday will be the Freakers Ball with Grimner and Moose Girl correct Amundo you guys is there going to be a Freakers Ball or is it going to be balls to the wall Saturday the first dork table of the year with yours truly and flasher dork that flasher rooney head that is just so fun and yeah he's such a Jewy guy little Jewy guy <laughs> oh well um but that will be on Saturday and then then Sunday, Grimmy is going to be loading up the blues, and there's going to be a rousing game of Trivial Pursuit going on, I'm sure, in the RLM chat. And then Sunday afternoon, 3 p.m. Eastern Time, Hal Anthony, who's going to take your ass behind the woodshed, open up a can of whoop-ass. Cricket's going to sit back in their little cricket lawn chairs with their little cricket popcorn and their little cricket adult cricket beverages, and watch you get your ass whooped. And then Sunday evening will be Gary L. and Gigi's Boo with The Road Less Traveled. All firsts for this year. So, yeah, lots of firsts coming up. So be sure to stick around or check back because, yeah, we got all kind of stuff going on here on the RLM. What? Um, oh, thanks, Chloe. Just say no. You think Moosey will be here? Booyah! So it will be the Freakers Ball on Friday. Yay! <laughs> oh, well, you know, um, Cowboy Tech, that's a wonderful way of putting it. Because, you know, I was always told insanity is, is hereditary. You get it from your kids. And my mom tells me it's contagious. And But, hey, if it works. <laughs> 
I know smiles are contagious, giggles are contagious, and that's a good thing. That's a good thing, because if you go out there and you smile and you say a kind word, just imagine the ripple that you're sending out into the sea of humanity. You may have just made someone's day a little bit brighter. So yeah, on this new year, why don't you try and do something, you know, to make your day a little brighter. Every day, just try and find at least one thing that makes you if for no other reason, even if it's at someone else's expense, because you got to start somewhere. Look back and giggle, or get a smirk, or something. But you really need to be careful. You really need to realize that when you see someone else, when you're observing them, you're really not seeing them. You are seeing your perception of them. And they are doing the same with you. So, y'all have an absolutely amazing rest of the day.